very competitive. Uh, there have been many times we play Northwestern in recent memory where, uh, not recently, but I go back to 99, where it's not tough. Uh, maybe an exception in 02, but that's about it. So uh, guys, you know, kept competing out there, working away at it, and just really proud of the team to be 7-2 uh, and two right now. And, uh, you know, just happy for each other, the way they're playing for each other. Defensively, obviously, they played really well. Uh, gave up the one scoring drive. Uh, credit to, to our opponent on that one, but outside of that, just uh, played really well. Uh, first half was tremendous, and uh, to come up with a goal line stand was huge. And um, you know, this uh, our opponents did the same thing last week in their game against Maryland. That was a big, big, big part of that victory too. So, uh, just really great job. Special teams a little spotty today, but uh, you know. Coming up the pump block, that was huge. And it's great complimentary football, getting a stop, getting the pump block, and then coming back, converting that to a touchdown. That's how we have to play. Uh, so that was big. And then, you know, Torrey didn't have his greatest day of the day uh, year, but if, if we needed him there at the end, I'm confident he would have come back. Good good players do that, and he's uh, been one of our best players this year. So, and the same thing with Drew. You know, Drew hit that first one off the post, um, and then ends up basically in the same spot, uh, you know, and nails the winner. So. Uh, just, you know, really proud of the resiliency those guys showed. And I think offensively, uh, we did some good things today. Uh, not enough, and that's something we'll just keep working at. Had a couple injuries, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, did some really good things as well. Moved the ball. I think we left uh, probably about nine points out there in the first half, which, you know, if we're going to win moving forward, we're going to have to learn how to convert those things a little bit better and do a better job there. Uh, but, you know, certainly did some good things in the second half, and obviously the last drive. Um, if they had to do to get the ball down there and give uh, Drew a chance to nail it. So just happy about that. And then, you know, last but not least, uh, just appreciate our fans uh, turning out the way they did. Uh, you know, it's probably a little better experience for the fans, quite frankly, than the participants as far as logistics. It's cool to be in Wrigley Field. I'm not, not minimizing that. Appreciate history. But um, hoping, hoping as we move forward that the uh, league comes up with a policy where both teams have to co-sign. Seems like that'd be a fair thing to do, and I, I imagine somebody's still probably thinking about that now. So, uh, but all that being said, we're going home happy. We get seven wins, and it makes the bus ride a little bit easier for us. So I'll throw it out for questions. Kirk, this is a trying week for everybody in, with the program. Yet your players seem to respond the way they always do. What you know? What was the message to them throughout the week, and how do you think that they took the message? and then put it in, did the job that they needed to do. Yeah, I think they, you, should, you saw tonight how our guys are and how they operate. Um, you know, talking in August about, like, you know, bumps in the road, that's a, it's one of the factors in any season. Uh, kind of falls in line, you know, our best guys got to play their best, we need stories. And then, you know, it's true for anybody, uh, whether it's, you know, football or life. Uh, you know, how, how are you going to respond to things that you're not wild about, things that you didn't, didn't anticipate, things you can't prepare for, how you respond to that. and. Uh, yeah, it's just life. So, you know, again, I go back, we, we've, uh, whether it's 1981, my first year here, or, you know, however many years this is later, a lot of really quality people involved in this program over time. And, uh, you know, best part of my job certainly has always been working with great people. And I feel the same today in the way the guys responded today. Just really, really proud of them because there's nothing easy out there. There's nothing easy this week. But, you know, you deal with it and you move on. You push forward. That's what you do. And, um, you know, that's what uh, we encourage our guys to do. Dwight the Eisenhower, the outlook's always forward, so I'm straight ahead. Yeah, Talk about the mental toughness of uh, Drew Stevens to miss that kick and have basically the same attempt and then drill right down the middle. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you play any position, but certainly skill positions, <laughs> those guys are a little bit like relief pitchers. Uh, you know, they come in and have to perform. And, uh, you know, part of that is understanding you're going to fail. It's just part of the deal. You know, nobody wants to, but it's part of the deal. If you're a tackle, a corner, where everybody, hell, you know, who blew that coverage or the guy gave up a sack. So you have to have that, that kind of mentality where you can move on, you know, you know, learn from it and then just put it behind you and keep going. And Drew's done that earlier this year, too. Those two misses earlier and then came right back and, you know, it was, was true. So and, uh, Torrey would have been the same way. Next punt, he would have nailed. I'm confident of that. So you had confidence in it. I mean, you, you didn't try to throw the ball down the field and get a little bit closer. You were fairly conservative because you thought you could make it from there. Yeah, I think we're just inside the 40 and, you know, stretching at 36, 38 today probably would have been not comfortable, but realistic. And then, you know, goals get it inside the 35. So uh, had the clock working for us. So just wanted to, you know, try to make sure we had everything under control. Uh, offensive line um, dinged up. Uh, 
can you talk about Deacon or not Deacon uh, yeah. Logan and, and everybody else? Up yeah, I mean, they got a couple guys banged up, so we'll see. See what it looks like tomorrow. But it, it made the challenge a little bit more steep. You know, you lose Logan, one of our best players, and our whole team on a leader. You know, so but but again, credit Tower jumped in there and did a really good job. I think he had one holding call, but uh, no no exchange issues. Ball security is a lot better today than last time out. So. And, and the center touches the ball every time. He's more important than the quarterback in that regard. So it's just, uh, you know, here's the guy coming in cold and played pretty, you know, helped us function and played well. So you know, we'll see where it's all at. Who so are some of the logistical issues playing here versus, if, you know, when you go to Ryan Field? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just glad none of our players had to run like a nine route down that far <laughs> corner down there. Right. Uh, you know, you drive into Chicago, you get all these. Uh, Malpractice, you know, attorneys advertising the billboards. I think six of them were, were seated right up there and they're going to give out business cards if anybody hit that wall. And I'll, I'll, you know, I'll burn some clock here. So when I was a kid, uh, I know it was the Redskins can't tell you they're playing. John Jefferson went to Arizona State, was running a nine route. I think it was RFK Stadium, whatever that was. It was an older stadium. Mm -hmm. Hit that wall full speed, the wall one. He got up, he was fine. But you, know, you got to be worried about stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I um, think that's consideration. Uh, the fact that we had two teams on the same sideline in the name of revenue, I suspect, uh, you know, it would have been a little bit better logistically to have both teams like a normal game. So, you know, it's cool to be in a historic place. I'm not minimizing. It's even cooler right now. The lights are on out there. Uh, you know, you think about the players that have played here in the history of uh, baseball, the great players. It's all cool. You know, I'd rather buy a ticket, though, you know. So, but we, we survived. And then the last thing is the, you know, the field condition down there. I don't know if, if that impacted them on their their uh, goal line series. Certainly, it, it, you know, it was impacting us, and the ball's right on top of that, you know, sand pit or whatever it was. So, yeah, and it's just things like that. No, I mean, you got to deal with that. And NFL stadiums were like that 20 years ago. A lot of bad fields. Since, since the end of the uh, Minnesota game, mm -hmm. there's, there's been a lot of emotions, mm -hmm. and you guys haven't even played a game. Like, it, it, was there any relief of just like getting back to being able to play a game, or did it just kind of feel like any? Oh, yeah. I mean, you want to go out and at some point you want to get back out there and go. So, um, you know, and it just you, you just never know how people are gonna react to anything. Right. I mean, we all know that in just real life. I'm not talking about sports. So certainly in sports, um, you know, it could be a really good response. It could be the other way, too. But you, know, you just like to bank on who you're working with and figure it's going to be OK. Deacon had that. Uh, receiver who made a big play. Who, yep. Uh, Hunt blocker. Um, yep. Stranger. Yep. Uh, it's game nine, and it looks like some guys are popping up. Yeah, I mean, part of the, you know, how you respond to the bumps, next man stories. And, you know, I, I just throw this, we got a lot of guys doing things out there that really don't have a real impressive resume in terms of college experience. Uh, Caleb, you know, last year was his first year playing receiver, and I think he was on the scout team. He won with us, but uh, he was a high school running back, a really good one. But, you know, you have to learn how to play a position. Uh, Strang is a second year guy. Uh, Ontario, you know, basically was injured here, but uh, he's learning on the on the run. Uh, and I, you know, I've been saying that about uh, about Deacon. You know, Deacon hasn't played a hell of a lot of football, especially whatever league he played out there in twenty out there during the pandemic. So, um, you know, the, the trade deadline in the NFL it's over. So I mean, it's just uh, we we'll play the guys that we got. And and the thing I can tell you, all these guys are really working hard. So it's good to see their efforts get rewarded a little bit, and uh, all those guys I just mentioned. There's other guys too, and that, that's part of it. Yeah, you know, now we got a couple other guys hurt, so other guys got to jump in and you know get it done, help out. Deacon had, Deacon had that regime, yeah. seeing some time on offense. What kind of went into the decision to try that out, and is that something that people can expect to see kind of consistently moving forward? Well, we'll see. I mean, I can tell you what the fear is. You know, is we only got one of them, and uh, take him out of our defensive equation. I think you guys have figured it out right now. We're probably a little better on defense and special teams. And, uh, you know, offensively, we're uh, trying to move, you know, move the needle forward and uh, what have you. So, but, you know, you take a key player out, just like you take Lachey or Eric Hall out, things change. So, you know, it's a decision you got to uh, make and you got to try to weigh and measure. And hindsight's going to be a lot better uh, no matter what. But, uh, you know, we could have done that with Micah Hyde. Could have done that with Cooper. I mean, we've had several guys like that, but it just, you know, you got you to be smart and think about the big picture. Deacon had that first half interception, I think a fumble that got recovered, but then he comes back, has that touchdown pass, has that pass to Caleb Brown on that last drive. 
his thoughts on his performance? Well, hopefully it does a lot for his confidence. And again, coaches can't hand confidence. The guys, you just can't do it. You can't buy it. You can't go to the store on the internet and you know, social media buddies can't give it to you. So hopefully that will help his confidence. Because, <coughs> yeah, the, inter uh, excuse me, the interception is not a good play, not a good throw, not a good decision. And I'm not trying to slam him, but it just, he knows that. Like, it was just a bad play. Um, and then the strip, you know, there takes more than, ball security is usually more than one guy. Uh, but to come back in the second half and do some of the things he did, that's really encouraging. And hopefully this will give him a little confidence. And, uh, you know, life's a lot different if we can complete a couple 20-yard passes, things like that. Uh, just It just helps open things up a little bit. So, yeah, I, I, we've been chipping away day by day. There's no magic formula, no magic panacea. And, just keep chipping away, and hopefully it starts to show a little bit uh, walk, out there in terms of performance. You walk Jeff. away today alone in first place in Big Ten West. I totally yeah. realize there's three games left, but what does it mean to you and the program to be in that position, uh, you know, in mid-November? Well, yeah, as far as the, the conference, I mean, the whole month of November, college football, if you're in college football, the month of November really defines you just like NFL used to be December. I guess now it's December, January. They keep pushing the schedule back. but. Um, you know, you find out what's what, who's who, and that's usually how you get remembered. Um, so somehow, some way, you got to find a way in November. And this is one out of four. It's a four-lap race right now. Um, so it's one out of four, and happy about that, and just happy to be at seven. We'd rather be at nine, but we're not. And we're not looking back. We're looking that way. So, you know, we'll enjoy this uh, on the four-hour ride home if we can get out of Chicago with a uh, lot of big delay. Uh, I'm pretty sure our fans aren't going to be on the road. They're probably having a good time right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully we drive right by them and, you know, we'll enjoy the ride home and then uh, see what things look like tomorrow. All right, thank you.